that's kind of hard being interviewed. Man, God bless all of you guys that have gone before me. Uh, we're in Romans chapter number 14. We're talking about uh, basically what does it look like to be a Christian during the election season? What's, it, what's the attitude? What's the, you know, what should we be doing? And, and uh, man, it's just, it's so crazy, this whole thing. You know, it's, it's you, you think you've seen the last of the craziness and you see more craziness. And, and I'm talking on the, on the, the obviously the, the higher levels. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, the crazy thing is, is you have a room full of people like this and there are a lot of people in here that see an obvious choice. They see an obvious choice. But the crazy part is that a lot of you see the obvious choice, but the choice is opposite from somebody else who sees the obvious choice. And some of you see the obvious choice, and the obvious choice isn't one of those two even. But it's obvious to you. It makes perfect sense to you. It falls in line with what you're thinking. It falls in line with who you are. So how are we as a church that, that, that is uh, full of people who independently think, who... Uh, are, are, are filled with the Holy Spirit, who have unique backgrounds, who have grown up in unique cultures, who have uh, things that have happened in your life that make you uniquely sensitive to certain issues. Um, and yet we all come together from different parts of the country, from different parts of the uh, uh, world. Some of us have had world experience, some of you have, and uh, uh, you've come from different parts of uh, uh, of ways of thinking, different uh ways your parents raised you, and, 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 and lots of different things. And so when we come to a time like this, if we're not careful, in a room like this, we can become very divided over things that don't really matter in light of eternity. We can get super spun up about things that, 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 that are not, um, not the main thing. And so Paul, when he wrote here to the Romans, and he wrote chapter number 14, it looks to me like they were dealing with some of these same types of issues, although it was over different subjects. And in the church, we know we can all have differences of opinion about things, right? Um, How many of you think everybody in here likes the exact same kind of music? Everybody? How many of you in here like the old hymns? I mean, that's just your thing. That's your thing. Yep, yep, yep. Wow, you should you should really sing more hymns. Um, how many of you in here could care less if we ever sang another hymn? Fifteen, twenty people. How many of you here just it, it, if it, if it's if it's uplifting the Lord and we're singing it together, you like it? Yeah, right. How many like rock and roll? <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. Um, you know, it's it's just different. How many of you can't stand rock and roll? How many of you like country? Oh. Man, look at that. Oh, man, we should have prayer right now for our home church congregation. Now, listen, you know what? Because, because it's an opinion. It has a lot to do with a lot of different things. I grew up in West Virginia. I don't care for country music, but I heard it all the time, right? Um, you know, it, it, we have differences of opinion about styles of preaching, about Bible versions, about the way, way you should dress the church. Some of you dress immaculately to church. Some of you don't. That's okay. Uh, You know, because we're not here to try to uh, conform to some image that we show. We're here coming uniquely us, coming together as a group to worship our amazing God who has a unique relationship with each of us. And so as we look at this and we think of it in light of politics, um, let's, let's take a look at the the first thing here, see if I'm going now. There we go. First things, what about the week? And here's the crazy thing about this. All of us, no matter where you're at, are not going to think you're the one that's weak in this passage of scripture. It's just the way we are. We're all going to look at this and think, yeah, I'm the strong one. And the person that thinks different than me, they're clearly weaker than me. That's how we're all going to think about this. But let's just assume for a minute that you are the strong one, that we are the strong. We're strong in our position. We have strong faith in our position. Let's assume that. What do we do with the people that aren't where we're at? How do we treat people who aren't where we're at or or who we don't think quite see it the way we think they should see it? It says, 
in verse number one of chapter 14. It says, except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. Ah, wow. Right out the gate today, huh? You know, the, the thing that, what, what do they say? Never talk about with, a, with, a, with somebody if you want a good relationship with them. Number one, religion. Number two, politics. Why? Because they're super divisive. They're super divisive subjects. But what's this say? When you see somebody, and like I said, a lot of us feel like we have, I know what I'm doing. Just, I got my ballot. I know what I'm doing. And I think I'm doing the right thing according to me. Right? I, I feel like I'm, I'm, Lord, what would you have me to do? I feel like that, 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 that I'm doing what I should do. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. But, but I feel like I am. But it's different than what some of you are doing. And it's different from what some of you other people are doing. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of differences of opinion. But all of us, when we mark that ballot or do whatever we're going to do, are going to feel really strongly that we're doing what we should do. Some of you may decide you're not going to vote. Some of you may decide you're going to vote one way, uh, one direction, another direction. Some may be third party. But there's a lot of different things going on right now in our heads and our minds. So what do we do? It says, accept one another except the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. We, as we gather as a church, we have something so much bigger, so much more powerful, so much more important to talk about, and that is the fact that Jesus Christ is real, he's alive, he's sovereign, and people out there need him desperately. Right? So, that's the thing that binds us together. When we have Jesus in common, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, uh, other parties, I don't know, there's a bunch of them. All that, all that tells in comparison to the fact that we have the pillar of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in common. Amen? He makes everything else hell in comparison so that when we come together, we can have unity, but we can only have unity through Jesus Christ. So, except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. Disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything. He's talking about this in, in light of food, but we can certainly shift this to a bunch of different topics, including politics. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. So you, both of them can be fully convinced that they're doing the right thing, and both of them can be right in what they're doing by faith, believing they're doing what's right according to their uh, according to their faith in Christ, right? Some, we need anything. I fall in the first group there. Um, uh, my faith allows me to eat anything, apparently. Uh, but, but some others, they eat, eat only vegetables. And this was for religious reason. Verse number three, the one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Let's put it in our current context. Those of us um, that are voting one way and fully convinced in that must not look at con- on, with contempt on those who happen to be voting another way. Right? I didn't get too much on that. All right, so anyway. Amen. All right. And, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. And the one who votes the other way must not look back on the other way and judge them as being some kind of heathen for voting the way they're voting. Right? Why? Because God has accepted them. Has God accepted somebody that's going to vote for Donald Trump for president? Has God accepted somebody in this room that's going to vote for Hillary Clinton for president? <laughs> yes. And and listen, you may have very good reasons to do so in your mind. There's a certain issue. There's something that's important to you. There's something that rings true to you. There's this personal situation you've been through that leads you one way or the other. And before God Almighty, you say, that's where I'm going to cast my vote on this thing that you're sovereign over anyway. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to follow him. And I'm going to do that. And guess what? We're not, if we're voting one way, we don't judge the others. And if you're voting one way, you don't condemn us or vice versa. However you want to make that thing work. Now, verse number four, who are you to judge someone else's servant? Here's here's a cool thing. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? Whose servants are we? We serve God Almighty, don't we? 
Now listen, we all are uniquely us. We all have been, we all have so many unique experiences that make us who we are, a unique personality, unique gene makeup, and every other thing that makes us who we are. And as we come before God and we say, what do you have us to do in these, these, these littler matters? What do you have us to do? And he points us in a certain direction. Guess what? Who am, who are, who am I to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Amen? We may see it as them being, you know, just, they just don't quite get it. They just don't quite understand. But guess what? They're serving God in their way the best they can. We should be encouraging and lifting up, not tearing down and judging and condemning. We should be more unified than ever through this season in our country than not. Because we're all more focused now than we ever have been on the fact that Jesus Christ is in control. Amen? So, who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master's servant stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. So now, we should be fully convinced in what we're doing, right? And we're going to put this in context of voting. We should be fully convinced in what we're doing, but we should also be understanding of people who aren't where we're at. It says here in verse number uh, five, one person considers one day more sacred than another. This could be issues. This could be a lot of different things. When we think about it in the political realm and voting and what it looks like to be Christian voters and Christian ballot casters in a unique situation in the United States of America, well, I consider the greatest country there is. What we, what we, we have this unique opportunity to, to vote, and we, we have a unique opportunity to have a, a, a small voice, but a voice. Listen, one person considers one day more sacred than another. Some of us are going to consider some issues more important than other issues when we cast a ballot. You know, you can think of the main ones that Christians think of, uh, conservative Christian, uh, you know, big talking points, like abortion. It's a big issue. Big issue. Um, uh, marriage, big issue. But there's also other issues like feeding the hungry, uh, taking care of the immigrant. Um, you know, there, there's, there's uh, fiscal responsibility. There's lots of things, and, and something may ring true to you, and, and, and it, you need to be fully convinced that that's what you're doing, but also understanding of those who may think different. It says one person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. And there's people in here that, that one day a week, that's their Sabbath. That they, they take it, and they, they, that's their day. They don't. Some of you may be on Sunday. Some of you may be some other time. But you, you think one day, and you take one day, and you reset. And that's great. That's between you and the Lord. You should do that. But some, of, some people don't, and that's okay too. It says, Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Listen, the main thing is we are serving God who's sovereign over all. And within that context, we make certain decisions as we live our lives to do certain things, live a certain way, follow him as he leads us uniquely by his spirit working through us. And as we do that, our lives are going to look different. The things we emphasize may look different. The, 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 the directions we take may look different. The way we serve him may look different. The way we worship him may look different. But he is our God and he is their God. And all of us on this earth who are following Jesus Christ are going to end up in the exact same glorious, wonderful place. And that's in the presence of God Almighty in the new heavens and the new earth. And as long as we have that in common, we can accept each other humbly knowing that even though we're different, we have far more in common than we do not in common. Now, it says, here, here's the next section in, in Romans chapter 14, guiding and not pushing. Guiding and not pushing. Now, we all have, some of us have really strong opinions about politics and about the direction of our country and different things. Here's the thing. If you're really strong in that, 
don't try to push people over to where you think, to where you're at. Or pull them or drag them or smack them or kick them or hit them. Guide them. If you really have something you think is important that needs to be said, say it in a way that opens dialogue and allows for real decent conversation so that you can talk through the issues. And even if you come through at the end of the day and you're not in agreement, you can shake hands or give each other a hug and look each other in the eye and say, I love you, thanks for the talk, and you can go your separate ways. Even though you may not have come together on the issue, you've come together as brothers and sisters. We're bad about lobbing hand grenades at people that don't think like us. Facebook right now is is insane, is insane. And, and I, don't, I don't see it a lot necessarily from people coming from here. But I, I see some things that, that are disturbing. And they're things like showing very graphic pictures to illustrate certain things or, or, or doing other things to try to shock value and try to really shame people into feeling bad. Listen, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. If you have something to say to somebody and you think it's important and you think it needs to be the point needs to be made, then do it in a way that that loves them first and is not trying to prove your point first or my point first. It's so much easier to talk to you guys when I'm doing this than to talk to me. But I mean us. Sometimes I mean you, but most of the time I mean us. Guiding, not pushing. It says in verse 10, you then. Ha, see? You. Uh, you then, <laughs> God speaking, don't get mad at me. <laughs> you then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. Following Jesus frees us from the burden of having to judge each other. Following Jesus frees us from the burden of having to look at somebody and determine whether or not they're truly following Jesus. Following Jesus gives us the freedom to let people be them and to open dialogue and to talk and to debate and have great discussions about differences of opinion and come together around the fact that we love Jesus Christ supremely and after all, no matter what happens, he's firmly, solidly, perfectly, eternally in control. Amen? You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? Be free from that. For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. He's the judge. Here's the crazy thing. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord. And he surely lives. Every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. Right? So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. You know what we're doing here? You know what I'm doing? I'm trying to follow my loving, kind, gracious Father God. I'm trying to follow Christ. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not doing what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not I, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying my best to follow him. My life looks a lot different than a lot of your lives. But guess what? I'm fully convinced in my mind that you're just as much and just as in love with God Almighty and with Jesus Christ, and you're trying to follow him too. Our paths may go different ways, but we're following God. And guess what? We're going to give an account for our lives to our master, to our great father, as we go and stand before him one day. We'll, 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 he'll be the judge of all that. We don't have to judge each other. We don't have to judge each other and say, well, he's absolutely 100% wrong because he's voting for so-and-so or she's voting for him or he's voting for her or whatever. But rather we can say, you know what? I love you and, and just follow God. Follow, follow him and do your thing. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, what should we do instead? Make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. Instead of trying to get our opinions across to people in a way that shows how smart and how great and how superior we are, perhaps we should stop maybe doing that and start considering how other people are living, what they're doing, what they need, and consider their needs above our needs and clear the way for them to see Jesus instead of muddling it up with our issues and our opinions and our ideas. 
says in verse 14, I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. That's a crazy statement for Paul. That's a crazy statement when you think about it. That nothing is unclean in itself. And that's the thing. You see churches that do things differently. You know, you see churches that, that they have a big performance up here. We're not very good at that. <laughs> so we don't. We don't have a, we, we don't, but other churches do. They have a big thing and it's, there's lights. They have fog machines. Super cool, man. And um, ours would probably set off our alarms. We'd all run out the building. But anyway, uh, but, but they're, they're, they do a bunch of different things. And you know what? It's way different than we do it. And the guy gets up and he talks way different than I do. And, 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 and they, they, they look way different than we look. But guess what? They are following God Almighty. And if they're following him to the best and God's leading them in that direction, let's not judge them. Let's love them. They're our brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself, but if everyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. Right? So you may feel like uh, something is a super important issue, and other Christians in the room may feel like it's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal according to something else. So, but, but for that one person, it's a very important thing. I heard it illustrated like this one time. Um, with the public school system. We were asking a question, and, 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 and where I come from, everything's got to be either black or white. Everything's either right or wrong. There's very little gray, especially the college I went to. There's very little gray. And I remember asking a question to a professor and said, well, what about a public school? You know, we, we should send our kids to Christian schools, clearly. You know, I mean, that's how I felt then. My, all my kids go to public school. I feel like I have very good reasons to do so. We articulate those reasons with my kids, and I, I feel like it's the right thing for us. No problems, no qualms, no regrets, no nothing on my part. Some of you have chosen to go a different path. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. But here's the thing. It might very well be wrong for you to send your kid to a public school. It might very well you be going against what God would have for you, but it might be very right for me to do so. You see? We can have two different opinions on one big subject and feel very, very, very firm on it one way or the other. But guess what? At the end of the day, when we come together, our kids might go to different schools. We may have different philosophies. We may have a lot of different things. But we have something so much bigger in common, and his name is Jesus, and he's what matters. So I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself, but if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Think about this in light of this political season. Have some of our actions caused this undue distress to people in a way that wasn't loving? If so, we need to change. If so, we need to stop. If so, we need to start considering, hey, you might have your opinion, but maybe you need to pick your spots and where you interject that opinion and why. Because you're loving the people that are around you. I'm not telling you to be quiet. I'm not telling you to stop. I'm not telling you you can't say anything. I'm saying be careful who you're talking to and consider who you're talking to and how strongly they may feel the other way. And consider their needs above your needs. Amen? That's what we do. We consider each other more uh, valuable than ourselves. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. We, and we want to act in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Do not, by your political leanings, destroy someone for whom Christ died. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. In other words, you may be firmly believed that, that you're to do something, but don't act in a way that makes it look like you're, you're, you're just a, a pompous, arrogant, evil person for doing so. Amen? It's like if I came in and said, you homeschool your kids? <laughs> I mean, are you serious? Don't you know they won't have any other friends? Don't you know they will scourge down to their ankles and, 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 and have a dust trail behind them and, and, uh, and they'll... They'll, they'll play kickball for a living or something or, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Are you serious? 
Are you, are, you, are you thinking? Is your head screwed on straight? I would never do that. And that's not what I think. I probably should have made that. I should have gone the other way. You seriously send your kids to a public school? You like your kids to be half naked all the time? You like your kids to be, uh, uh, you, you, you like them, uh, you know, you want your son to be a homosexual? I mean, is that what you want? You, do you want him to, uh, uh, to be uh, just a puppet for the government so that he'll just grow up and they'll say yes, sir, to everybody, and every time he has to use the bathroom, he'll raise it, and then he'll go? Do you, do you want that for your kid? You know what I'm going to think of you? If, you? if you do that to me, I'm going to think, man, what a jerk. What a jerk. I don't want to be around that person. And guess what? Something that may be very noble and the fact that you want to raise your kids and, and you want to nurture your kids and that you've been given the gifts to raise your kids and homeschool your kids, and that may be very noble and awesome and beautiful and wonderful, but I'm going to look at you and think, man, their attitude sure changes all that. You know what I mean? So it's all in how we, we pre- don't let the things that you're, you're being very noble and following God be evil spoken of because of your unthinking, uncaring actions, our unthinking, uncaring actions, right? And I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem. We homeschooled our kids half the time, and we sent our kids to public school. So please, I, I didn't mean to. I don't think that about homeschool kids. That's just homeschool kids in West Virginia. I'm sure they're way different in Oregon. <laughs> but anyway. If you're public school, that's exactly what public school is like. All right, so anyhow, if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's not a matter of voting. It's not a matter of politics. It's not a matter of worship styles. It's not a matter of any of that, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Doesn't that simplify it for us? Let's just follow God and be us with God working through us. I need you to be you with Jesus working through you. That's what I need. He gifted you uniquely. He gave you gifts and talents. He made you a beautiful, unique piece of art from the very breath of his being and created you you. And he fills you with his Holy Spirit. That's what we need. We need you following Jesus. I don't care who you vote for. I need you following the Holy Spirit. You're searching for righteousness, peace, and joy in him. Amen? That's what we need. And you need that from me. So, it's not about those other things. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Two-way street. Right? If you do that, if you're full of peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Spirit, guess what? It serves Jesus Christ, and you get human approval. It's going to be hard to be mad at somebody who's walking around who's full of righteousness, full of peace, and full of joy. Amen? Now, the last thing, peace and edification. Well, there's one more after this. Let us, therefore, make every effort. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Through this political season, through this time of the divisiveness, through this difficult time of trying to make a decision that is that that is just crazy, and there's a lot of different moving parts, and there's a lot of new things that come out every day. Here's the thing. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Let our actions through this time of divisiveness show the world that we of all people are unified in Jesus Christ regardless of our differences in political affiliation. And let's strive for peace with each other and let's strive to build each other up. Amen? Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of politics, for the sake of voting, for the sake of some political candidate. Do not destroy the work of God for that is not worth it. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. So let's act in a way where we're picking each other up, not kicking each other down. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So let's have attitudes that show the world that we are lifting each other up. We are for each other. We're on each other's side. And Jesus is more important than any election that's ever happened. Now, the last thing, here's the last thing. It's only a verse. A foundation of faith. It says here, so whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. 
Now, I think it's okay to have an opinion. I think it's okay to, 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 to say some things. But I also think it's got to be in the right attitude. We have to be careful that what we're doing is not just us trying to get our team to win, but what we're doing is trying to build each other up and trying to have peace with one another. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. You know what? I don't think any of us genuinely care who you're voting for. Whoever you're voting for, if you feel firmly about it, if that's your person, if that's your guy, no matter what level it's on, then that's great, but probably the best thing to do, uh, one a, a good piece of advice from the Word of God, I'll put it that way, is just to keep it between yourself and God for the most part. Amen? Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. Also very important. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. Let's be careful when we when we when we get behind somebody so forcefully and so strongly. Let let let's let's be careful because what we approve may very well turn around and condemn and, and betray some of the other things that we say we believe. So we've got to be really careful about that as well. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So wherever you're at in this political process and whatever you're going to do in this little voice that you have, that we have, that we can actually have a say and vote, let's do it and let's follow God and let's have the faith that he's leading us in the right direction. But above all else, let's realize we have Jesus Christ in common and we have each other in our lives and God has put us here for a reason. So no matter what we think, no matter what we feel about political affiliations, let's pray and ask God to help us to, to do and have actions that lead to peace and that lead to building each other up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our sovereign Lord that already knows who's going to win this thing. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just ask that you'd help us. God, I ask that you would uh, help me. Lord, I'm so close sometimes to just getting caught up in the fray. I just want to type things and say things. And Lord, keep us out of the muck. Keep us out of the mire. And help us to rise above with hearts and attitudes that scream out, Jesus is bigger and better and stronger and and will last through eternity. He's the one we follow. And let, let us let us through this political time of uncertainty look to you and live in a way that points other people to you as we strive for peace and for the mutual building up of one another through this process. God help us, guide us and lead us. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This season sermon series, we're ending every sermon, every service with prayer, because that's where we really believe our power is. As you said during the first sermon, the hearts of God, of the kings are in God's hands. The submission is in God's hands. Prayer is more important than voting. It really is. It really is. That's where our power is. So I'm going to invite the people I talked to, Mike, could you come up here, Perry and Peggy? Okay, come on up. We're going to take some time to pray and lift up our country, our leaders, our own hearts to God. Let's all stand. Father, we want to thank you in Jesus' strong name that you are here with us. Your presence lives and causes us to have meaning in our lives. I'm so grateful that we can walk with you, we can listen to you, we can grow in you. And after hearing this sermon, Father, today, I will not pretend to wax eloquent. I I just ask you, Father, that uh, we would be, as your word says, slow to speak and quick to listen, especially regarding political things. So that, Father, it might be said of us all that 
they will know that we are Christians because of our love. Good morning, dear family. Isn't that a lovely name, family? I just ask you to raise your hearts to the Lord for this precious country that we have been so blessed to live in. Father, first of all, we just want to tell you how much we love you and how much we trust you. And, and we know that you don't do anything willy-nilly, that everything that happens first of all, passes by your throne and gets your okay for your special purpose. And we have to confess that sometimes we just think, oh, what chaos. But, oh, Father, that is not true. I just pray that, that we would just be a calm, uh, peaceful pool, uh, a, a, a pool of calm knowing that whatever comes has passed by your throne and we can trust you. And I just thank you for trusting us to live in these kinds of uncertain times that we might be a light for you and for, for the people that are running around and are so concerned. Uh, help us to reach out to them that, that they might see your purpose and everything. God, as we close out the service here, we, and as we close out this political season, um, help us to cross the line well, putting you first in our things. As we look through your word, as we dwell, in your spirit. The things of this world seem so much to run counter to the things of your spirit. Help us to dwell on those, those words, those ideas like peace, patience, kindness, self-control, self-control of our mouths and of our hearts. And I would say, uh, God, submission. Help us to be a people that submits to your will, that draws near you, whatever this world may do one way or another. Help us to draw near to you and to be a people that submits to you. 